Today I want to cure a piece of pork and make what's called copa. Copa is traditionally Italian uh, delicatessen meat, uh, cured fermented meat that is taken from the, the, the shoulder. It's, well, it's this muscle right here in a pig. And it's uh, generally about, oh, I don't know, this big. And it's kind of hard to find an American butcher that'll cut one for you. So for our copa that I'm going to make today, I found this beautiful boneless center cut pork loin made by the Smithfield Corporation. Um, it was eight bucks. So we can clean this up and um, we'll fake it. But we'll do the same traditional spices, we'll do the same traditional curing method to um, prepare this piece of meat, which is to literally ferment the piece of meat and we'll, we'll look at how we do that in the, in the curing box and then let it dry, at which point after about a month, six weeks, um, we'll slice it finely and it'll be quite delicious. So, now let's see what we have to do with this. First of all, get it out of this cryovac. Yes, my hands are very clean. Um, not too much liquid. Let's get all this fat off of here. And probably what's left of what looks like might have been part of the where it was closer to the spinal cord to the uh, to, so we'll clean that up because basically we just want the lean meat we don't want any of this white we don't want any of this fat so we need to clean this up and make it look a little bit more like the copa that we're faking what I'm seeing is this piece of silver skin here this real fibrous looking piece that's very tough we need to get that out of there somehow but it looks like it sort of disappears inside there we'll do what we can you can see how tough it is I can barely get my knife into it angle up towards it and sort of saw at it, that way you get a nice smooth finish on the meat. The sawing action saws into the into the silver skin. I'm losing about a quarter of an inch of meat here, or an eighth of an inch. Oh good, I think I found the end of it. Let's do that again. I can just kind of catch underneath it, get a finger hold on it. sacrifice a little bit of flesh. But I really want that tendon out of there. I'm thinking we're going to trim off. Yeah, I'm finding, look what I'm finding. This can come off. I'll save this and make stir fry out of it, but I think I want to get that off of there. I really just want this this one loin. So let's get see what I'm left with. I can take that. I can take this. I think we're going to end up with a nice, nicer finished product. This is awfully thin. I think 
let's trim this right up into here and then we'll get that, that copa shape that I was looking for when I started this project. We can finish extricating this sheet of silver skin here. And then, how thick is that? Right about there. This is going to come off. What do we got? Yeah, see that? there's that tendon I wanted to take out. So, I think we're going to end up with a nice shape here. Again, I'm, I'm not throwing this away. That, I'm, I'll clean that up. I'll take the nasty bits out, and I'll make some pork stir fry out of that. That'll be delicious. This is the task at hand, is just to sculpt this into a nice, clean loin. Look at that. Look at that. Now that we've got the meat cleaned up, what I want to do is put together a salt cure. We'll just put the salt cure in a, in a Ziploc bag and we can go ahead and marinate or, or cure the meat to draw the, a lot of the moisture out of the meat with the salt through osmotic pressure. And in the process, what we can do is inject a lot of flavor at the same time. Secret ingredient is Instacure number one. Instacure number one is curing salt, is a mixture of sodium nitrate, regular salt, and a little bit of a red dye, so it's sometimes called pink salt. And you wouldn't want to eat this. This is basically poisonous. The, it'll cure your insides. Um, but for five pounds of meat, recommended guideline is a teaspoon. I've got, I don't know, three pounds of meat probably, so three-fifths of a teaspoon, and we've got enough Instacure. Why do I use this? Why do I use this known carcinogen in my diet? Because it kills botulism. Botulism is the main, botulism is probably more dangerous than anything I do around here and botulism is a big problem in cured meats. So this is my insurance policy against botulism. Put that in. I'm not going to worry about botulism for the rest of this project. What else? I've got some thyme that I cut from the garden outside. Let's put that in. A couple of bay leaves. Well, very few bay leaves, actually. What do we have here for bay leaves? Um, eh, half a dozen. Here, use them up. I'll refill this jar tonight. crush them in your hand, give them a little bit more surface area. Juniper berries? Oh, 12. These are quite strong. So you don't need a lot. Put them in a Ziploc bag just to Keep them in one place. Add those to our cure bag. Finally, some black pepper in our homemade pepper grinder. What do I have here? Oh, three quarters of a tablespoon. Great. Smells absolutely amazing. Next step is what's called the salt box method. There's two methods. You can do the salt by weight or you can do the salt bo box method. Salt box method is that you take the meat, flop it around in a box of salt, and then put it into your cure bag. Lacking a salt box, I've got a salt bowl and some kosher salt. I'm not using iodized salt. The kosher salt does not have iodine in it. If it does, you're buying the wrong kind of kosher salt. You don't want iodine. Iodine kills bacteria. So this is just, you know, as much salt as sticks to it. I'm not really pressing it. I've just got it on all sides. That's enough salt. However much salt your pork wants to pick up is perfect. We'll put it in our bag here. 
um, right on top of all those herbs. Squeeze out the air. There's salt everywhere. Get the salt out of the zipper here. Nice. This goes in the fridge every day. I'll turn it one side, the other side, and we'll take a look at this in a couple of days and we'll see how much it's changed. All right, well, here's our pork copa, our, 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 our pork loin that we've carved and, and salted and rested. And as you can see, the salt is, has really firmed the meat up. It, um, it's still somewhat flexible, but um, it's taken a lot of the moisture. You can see a lot of the moisture in the bag. And um, what we want to do is basically just rinse all of this off as best we can. If we leave some on, it really doesn't matter. But we don't need any extra crunch. A little bit of a fingernails here. to get all those crunchy peppercorns off and the, what else do we have on there? Allspice and juniper berries. There you go. Let me trim this a little bit, I think, with a knife. Get some more of this fat off of there. We don't need that on there at all. over to the rack. At this point, once you've got it rinsed off, just look for any any loose bits of meat that you might want to trim a little bit and um, clean the clean the meat up, more just for uh, appearance sake. Any uh, any leftover silver skin that you're that you missed on the first pass can get cleaned up. The meat's got a much different texture now. It's more it's almost like fish, I think. Just the way it's very 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 tense. Um, and very, very fine-grained. Once you've got your meat cleaned off, take about, oh, six feet of butcher's twine, and we will truss this. Take you know, about a third here. Tie the first loop tight in a square knot. And then it's kind of a overhand twist, and then down the length of the meat. It's slippery. And then kind of work it back and forth to get just the right length of the string there, so you get a nice angle. Okay, overhand, down the end. Tighten up, overhand, over the end, tighten your string. Try to get nice parallel loops. Keep pulling it tight, make sure you're fairly tight there. I think we'll do one more. Why are we doing this? The whole point is just to kind of give it a nice presentation. This is going to get cut off before we even serve it, but it will, these strings will um, dry into the meat and you'll see it in the finished product. You'll see um, when this is done how, what the strings did. Basically all we're doing is just trying to create something that we can use to hang the meat by in the, in the curing fridge. So try to do a nice job and uh, It'll pay off in the, in the long run. Here, our, our tail from the other side, we're just going to loop it around each of these strings. So over the top, lift it up, tuck it underneath, and pull it through. Over the top, tuck it underneath, pull it through. See this? Okay. Get, keep your wraps parallel. There you go.
straighten it up, tie the top, your second square knot. And then we'll do just a loop to hang it by. Okay. Trim the ends. And here's our finished product. We can hang that. And that's ready to go. Well, the last step was a little bit artistic with the, with the trussing and the tying of the meat and the string around the, the, the hunk of meat. The, this step is a little bit more scientific. Cured meat, when you bite it at the, at the delicatessen, a good cured meat has that white coating on it, that white kind of powdery coating. That's mold. It's a, it's a fungus. It's put there intentionally to control the surface growth of pathogens, of black molds, of those blue and green and yellow molds that you know will make you sick if you eat them. When you cure meat like this, it's, you want to control everything. You want to control the surface of the meat. You want to control it. Bacteria is in use. So what we're going to do is we're going to inoculate the surface of the meat with a single bacterium called Penicillium nalgiovense. It's a single strand of bacterium that is basically an antibiotic that's growing on the surface of the meat that's going to prevent all those other kind of off flavors and off molds from growing and that way we can control what exactly is growing on the surface of the meat while it cures. Mind you, I mean this meat is going to be kept at about 65 degrees, about 85 percent humidity for a couple of weeks. Not normally great conditions to keep meat in, to preserve meat, but in this case because we've controlled the surface of the of the meat we can do that, we can ferment the meat and end up with a delicious product. So this penicillium now, Juvense comes in a packet. You can buy it on the internet. This particular stuff is called Mold 600. It comes from a company called ButcherPacker.com. And it's made in the Netherlands. And it's basically just a single culture of the Now, Juvense strain of penicillium that is created to culture meat in. They culture the, the, the mold, they freeze dry it, they mix it with uh, dextrose, so it, as like a carrier, and that way you've got a, a, a convenient way to measure it. I mean, this packet, this packet's 25 grams and makes 10 liters of liquid to inoculate meat in. We're doing a single piece of meat, so I don't need nearly that much. So I'll probably do about a teaspoon of, of the powder here in a bowl of water, and then we can inoculate our, our meat that way. Let's take a look at the steps involved. So basically what we want to do is just make a liquid that contains the inoculant. So we'll take some room temperature water. We'll cut into our, make sure this is well agitated, the spores and the dextrose. And the dextrose is nice. It actually carries the spores down underwater so they can hydrate properly. Doesn't take a lot. When, think about when you use bread yeast. You just use a tiny little bit amount. It's going to reproduce its, its fungus. Just like yeast, it's going to reproduce. It's going to grow. We just need enough to inoculate with a small amount of the culture, the surface of the meat, so that we can create a, an environment for it to grow and reproduce and protect our meat. Here's the pork that we just finished trussing, and it's literally just a matter of making sure you get every surface of that coated with the mold culture. Before the meat goes into the cure box, you want to weigh it. Just to give you a baseline, here this piece of pork is seven, let's call it 750 grams. That's going to be a key factor here in a couple of weeks, I'll tell you why. Let's get this thing in the cure box. Well here it is, here's the, the meat curing chest. This is basically a, a Danby Millennium wine cooler, wine chiller, that I've taken the, the controller out of. The old controller had a, a range of, I think, 33 to 55 degrees for those of you that want to keep wine ready ready to serve in your home. I don't drink. 
I like to cure meat. So what I did was I tore that controller out and replaced it with a digital controller. I've got a digital temperature controller and a digital humidity controller. I've set the digital temperature controller to 65 degrees. So basically what happens is I've got the fridge plugged into this thing that you can see where the, where the temperature probe goes into the fridge through the hinge side here. And when the temperature inside the fridge goes above 65 degrees, the fridge will kick on. It's plugged into this controller. When the humidity goes above 75%, the dehumidifier kicks on. I've got a bowl of brine in there. I use salt in the water. The water evaporates and creates humidity in the fridge. The salt keeps the water from getting funky. So I've got a balance there of between the evaporating water and the dehumidifier that maintains the humidity that I'm looking for to cure this meat. Right now there's a piece of uh, basically a, a beef roast in there, there that I hung a couple of days ago. Pretty much the same process as the as the pork. I soaked it in red wine instead of the the brine that we made for the pork. These temperatures aren't accurate. I, I've had this the door open a couple of times setting up for the shot. But we can hang that in there. So we get some nice airflow between them. Um, some people actually go so far as to use a, a small miniature fan and plug this in and create a lot of nice air circulation, so like a convection oven almost, you know, as it would, circulates the air so this can, nice, can dry evenly. Um, I don't really like the prospect of running a fan 24-7, but I have it. If you can hear the, the uh, dehumidifier just kicked on, you can see the blue light. I like this. It's an Ibation dehumidifier. Bought it on Amazon. I've got a link below in the in the description of the video. But super product. It's got a little light to tell you it's on. You can um, go ahead and it cuts off when you remove the the water tank. You can pull the plug and drain the water out. And then once you're ready, tuck that back in there. Now that I've got all my levels set for my meat curing box, I'll go ahead and shut it off. What I want to do is just allow the ambient temperature of the room and the high moisture content of the cure box to cause an environment for the mold to grow. The, and we'll come back in a couple of days and we'll have a look and this mold that we've spread on here with the water dip bowl will have completely enveloped the meat and we'll see a nice coating, a nice protective antibiotic covering of penicillin mold that will protect the meat through the cure process. Well, hey, great news, look at this. Everything's going as planned. It's been four days, and as you can see, we've got mold. We've got lots of mold. The uh, pork is looking great. That looks like it just bloomed a day or two ago. The little black spots are a little bit of peppercorn, remember from the, the spice rub. And the braziola is probably an eighth of an inch thick. It's like a blanket of snow on there, it looks great. Remember why we're doing this. What we're trying to do is create a protective antibiotic coating, a penicillin mold that's going to protect our cured meat, which we're going to eat, from all those funky black molds, yellow molds, green molds, all that stuff that we're avoiding. Right now, I think we've got a nice safety blanket to uh, protect our meat. Let's take a close-up look at this. Yeah, these look super. I couldn't be happier with the coating that we've got on these. To touch it, it feels like if you buy a, a nice, well-aged uh, camembert or brie cheese, you get the same kind of texture on, the, on these meats. It's the same mold. You can see where the string that we tied on there is looking great. So we'll just double check here. Set point for the dehumidifier, 75 degrees, right where we want to be. And the refrigerator is set to 65. Currently it said it was 66 and I can hear the motors come on, so we're in a good place with that. I'll change the water bowl and we'll let this sit for a couple of weeks. I'll come back and probably weigh it in two or three weeks just to see how I'm coming along. So thinking about our pork, the pork weighed 750 grams. Once that gets right around 500 grams, I know I'm done. So 
I'll check this in a couple of weeks and we'll shoot some more of this video. I'll talk to you then. Once the meat's been curing for about four to six weeks, go ahead and weigh it. What we're looking to do is re remove about 30% of the water. So if our pork weighed 750 grams and we weigh it, we should be looking for about 500 grams. And looks like we're dead on the money here. So this one's ready to go. For the next step I like to do outside. Next step I like to do is remove a good part of the mold. It's edible, you can keep it on, but just a good stiff vegetable brush or a cleaning brush. I picked this up at the supermarket and ran it through the dishwasher. But just to give it a good quick scrub and take off as much of the mold as you want to. You really, you, like I said, you can leave it on. I, you know, on cheese it looks, it looks nice. I think on meat it's a little weird, so I like to take a good bit of it off. I don't like to take all of it off, but I'll just give it a good scrub. And then you can go ahead and take the string off too while you're at it. And here's the finished product. You can see I've got the string completely removed. It's still a little bit pliable. So again, this is about 30% reduced in moisture. Find a good sharp knife and treat yourself to a delicious salumi. I like to cut them in half and throw half of it in the freezer. But you can see the uh, how it's nice and tender in the center. You can see a little bit of a dry ring around the outside. But to serve this, you just want to slice it as thin as you can and serve it like you would. Oh, this is great. Oh, this is delicious. This is exactly what I'm after. You can taste the wine. You can taste the herbs. Well, I hope you enjoyed my pork curing lesson. Tune in for further episodes of fermenting on Better Done Yourself. Make sure you click my face and subscribe to my channel, and I'll be sure to share with you my further adventures in fermenting. That's all for now. Bye-bye.